in this section, we'll talk about disaccharides and then oligosaccharides. So now when we use the word disaccharides, we mean that there are two monosaccharides which have combined or joined by formation of a glycosidic bond. We'll take examples and understand how the glycosidic bonds are formed to form these disaccharides. The first one that we are talking of is maltose, which is commonly known as malt sugar. It is a disaccharide and it is made up of two glucose molecules. Now, to understand the bond formation, we will write down or we will draw the ring structures. It is glucose and glucose. We know the glucose ring is hexagonal ring and numbering of carbons is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because the bond that hemiacetal was formed between 1 and 5. If this glucose molecule makes a glycosidic bond with other glucose molecule with the similar structure then the carbon numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The glycosidic bond is formed between 1 and 4. This is glycosidic bond. And because it is between carbon number 1 and 4, we call it 1,4 glycosidic bond. During this bond, which functional groups have reacted to make this bond? It is aldehyde because carbon number 1 has aldehyde and carbon number 4 has OH. So it is aldehyde of one and OH of the other one. That means here the reducing functional group is gone. The aldehyde is the reducing functional group. Whereas in the other glucose molecule, there is intact aldehyde group. That means this disaccharide has a reducing power. So maltose is a reducing sugar. And the reason is that reducing functional group on one of the glucose molecules is intact. This is maltose. Now the next one that we are talking of disaccharide is sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide which is made up of one glucose and one fructose and it is commonly known as cane sugar. Reason it is obtained from sugar cane and that's why cane sugar. It is made up of glucose and fructose. The glucose molecule is same that is hexagonal ring. This is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Here, the bond is formed between 1 and 5. That's why this structure, that is the pyranose ring. And this is glucose. The bond is formed between pentose, uh, sorry, uh, fructose, which is a pentose ring structure. So in this case, the ring is like this. And let us put the numbers. This is carbon number 1. This is 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In case of fructose, we said the ring is furanose ring made up of 4 carbons. Attached to 2 is an arm where carbon number 1 is attached. Attached to 5 is the 6 because the bond is formed between 2nd carbon where the keto group is and the OH of 5th. That means the glycosidic bond formed here is at or between carbon 1 and 2. So we call it 1, 2 glycosidic bond. What is at number 1 of glucose? Aldehyde. What is at number 2 of fructose is keto. That means here the aldehyde group is also gone and here the ketone group is also gone. Both the groups because of which glucose and fructose were reducing sugars both are gone during this bond formation and that is why sucrose is a non-reducing sugar though it is made up of two reducing sugars glucose individually reducing 
fructose individually reducing but because during bond formation both those functional groups are lost sucrose is a non reducing sugar the third disaccharide is lactose lactose is made up of glucose and galactose and the bond is 1,4 glycosidic bond. 1 of 1 glucose, fourth of galactose. Now, in case of glucose, aldehyde is gone. Here, OH is taken from the galactose. Its reducing group is intact. That means lactose is also a reducing sugar. So, after bond formation, depending upon whether the functional group aldehyde or ketone are intact or not, the disaccharide would either retain that reducing power or may lose it. These are three important disaccharides. Now, if we talk about a trisaccharide, that means made up of three mono units. So, trisaccharides. One example that we take off is raffinose. Raffinose is made up of one glucose molecule, one fructose molecule and one galactose molecule. And it is found in sugar beet, found in sugar beet and coffee. So it is not a very sweet kind of a saccharide but it's an important example and here we are talking of a trisaccharide. We said one unit monosaccharide, two units join disaccharide. When there are three or up to say seven to eight units then we call it oligosaccharide. So actually this is a category of oligosaccharides. So we can have trisaccharide, tetrasaccharide, pentasaccharides and all. Instead of it, we use a common term that is oligosaccharide. So how disaccharides are formed? Where the glycosidic bonds are? These numbers that we write tell us the carbon numbers between which the bond is formed. Every time the bond is formed, it is with elimination of water. So, when a disaccharide is formed between glucose, say we take this example, glucose or say this example, it is C6H12O6 plus C6H12O6. So, when these two molecules combine C12H24 but H2 is gone. So, we have to reduce those two hydrogen atoms. So, it is H22 and in H2O, one O is gone. So 6 plus 6, 12 minus 1. It is going to be O, 11. That is the formula of a disaccharide, which is maltose because it is glucose, glucose. So with elimination of water molecule, these glycosidic bonds are formed. And whether the disaccharide is going to be a reducing sugar or not, it depends on bond formation has taken place between which groups. If both the reducing groups are gone, then the sugar becomes non-reducing, otherwise it remains a reducing sugar. Now in the next segment, we will start with polysaccharides. Up to disaccharides, they are placed under micromolecules, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides are in uh, macromolecules, mainly polysaccharides. So now we would, in the next part, we would start with polysaccharides.